Hey everybody! Um, I forgot what day it was. Happy Tuesday. Um, don't mind me. I'm just outside, or don't mind the tears. I'm just outside, and something about it being cold, I have to cry. Um, so today's project for my 25 days of Christmas is um, I'm working on these concrete planters on my porch. So. I wanted to get it done today because it got up to 50 or it's supposed to get up to 50. I am actually in the shade and it's windy so it does not feel like 50 degrees out but whatever it's nicer than it will normally be. So today's project and tomorrow's project will be outside. I went um, this morning, not even this morning but a couple hours ago and I cut down a ton of greenery. I have four different kinds. I am not um, educated in what the different kinds of pine, evergreen, whatever that I got. Um, I got two styles out of my mom's yard and two styles are out of the ditch. Um, pretty much all of the trees that are in the ditch are the same kind. So luckily my mom had a couple of different kinds to change it up a little bit. I normally have these planters. Um, my front door is kind of there where the buggy is in front of the buggy. I normally have these at the front door or have here since the summer, um, but you can't ever see them and no one uses the front door. So right now our Christmas tree is in front of the front door. So um, if you come to my house and you try and go to the front door, I know that you've never been to my house before. So I decided since our driveway is right here and then we walk to the back door or side door and that's how everybody enters our house um, I should move these to where I can actually see them um, I also had a couple of like half columns sitting by them um, which one of them how the wind normally whips around my house it normally falls over and you can't see it from the road anyway um, just how my porch is set up so it was really probably serving no purpose so I'm moving those to the back door and we'll probably decorate those one of these days as well we'll see if the wind whips that corner as much and if they knock over so the nice thing about these concrete plant planters is that they're not going to knock over obviously so I moved them to the side and then what I did is I went and got my mums that I had dump in the ditch or in the field and I cut off the greenery from those and they were still green because I was trying so 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 hard to keep them alive so that I could put them back in the truck for our family photos um, we had our family photos and it was like 30 degrees out it was freezing and we didn't even do any well my sister did didn't even do any by the truck really we just went out by the hay bales and so i'm going to use it now instead of using like some foam so in the bottom of the things i've had straw in here obviously i have a couple of chunks of concrete so that um i didn't have to fill them as full when they were had straw and pumpkins in them and then now I don't have to worry so much about um, this sinking all the way to the bottom. I left that stem on and I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not. We'll see if I can break it off. Or I'll just set it up this way. Okay, so then this is what I'm going to use instead of um, like the foam that uh, florists would use on the bottom of a plant because this is so full of roots that it's going to work really well to stab um, all of my evergreen twigs in. I have this clipper that sucks. It, it stinks because it's always locking itself and it doesn't like open and shut but I think I picked this up at an auction in a box and so I've kept it and I've actually used it. And then when I went out into the ditch, I used these clippers, which the screw had rotted off at some point, and I replaced it with this one, which is extra long and not very good, and it keeps coming loose, and I'm just tightening it by my hand. So it's not cutting the easiest, but it works. And then the mum is kind of frozen, and so I could not get all of the, um, the evergreen because I did the other one 
of my pears. I couldn't get all of the evergreen to stab into the dirt. So I ended up using a screwdriver, shoving that in there, making myself a hole, and then I could put the stick in there. So that, those are the tools that I am using. And then I am just basically going to match the planter um, that I already worked on as far as the coloring of the evergreens, like the pattern. So the first thing I did was I went in the ditch and I got some red um, sticks. I don't even know what they are called, um, but I dug those out and they're just locked on me. And I cut them extra long and with everything I cut it extra long because I knew be in the way I think I knew that it's you can always cut them uh, shorter you can't make them taller so I'm kind of starting with a couple of twigs in the middle and I kind of did a crazy one and then a couple of straight ones And if I had some uh, white birch logs, um, I've seen some planters with those in it. They look really cute. And if you want more color, because this is not very colorful, um, you could go to Walmart or Dollar General or something and buy some of those like plastic, bells or bulbs and get yourself some more color that way you could also add some pine cones um, keep them the natural color if you want or you could also spray paint them white or red or do something like that you could also get some twigs of I would say faux red berries because I think they'd be more colorful okay so Whatever this is, is what I'm going to start with here on the bottom. And I would say this one is more frozen than the other one. I think that's going to be too long. So I don't want to have to stab it in too long into the dirt just enough so that if the wind is whipping, it's not going to blow out and I'd be chasing uh, greenery all the time. And it's pretty windy, so hopefully the microphone is not uh, making it hard to hear. Got vicious guard dog Bella out here. So I'm curious if you guys have done a planter like this before. I'm actually thinking I have a couple of uh, milk cans with the, what would it be? The cream separator bowl that you can put on top. And um, these are not really, I'm not putting them as low as I did on the other one. And uh, I think I might do this on, in that as well because it looks nice and I really don't have anything in my front flower beds. I really don't have anything in my front flower beds for um, any color. It's just pretty much empty with a couple of pieces of junk in it. So the next layer, we are using some that I stole from my mom's house. 
which she informed me the tree is about dead and nothing ever grows back, so stop taking stuff. So I didn't get very much of this style. So then I'm just kind of going around in a circle on the, the bottom row, and then I'm going a little bit higher than that with the next one. And I'm used to hurting myself and not wearing gloves, but um, gloves are always a good idea. Because all of this stuff is pretty pokey. I am actually trying to get it into the dirt and that way um, if it stays more moist it's going to stay green and not get so dry and brittle. And this one's a big chunk but I don't want to waste any more of it so I'm just going to put it farther across to the other side so it's not hanging out of the pot so much but it's still in the pot. Got just another branch. I oh, actually got two branches. Still frozen. Weather here has been crazy. We've had so much wind. Okay, so let's see how it's looking so far. All right, looks like not bad. Not hitting the hole, obviously. This one's hanging out just a little bit too far. So you just kind of want to make it balanced. It's just going to kind of be like a dome shape. Since I have this kind right here, we're going to stick another piece. Now you can take a longer piece. I know I've been peeling it off a lot of times, but you can take this piece and use it and then you can take this and cut it again down here somewhere and use it again so you don't have to just use the tops of the branches dad is working on the barn i don't know if you can hear that drilling Okay, so then we're gonna go with this like yellow looking stuff. Um, 
these are they must be in different stages because these are a little bit more yellow and then this is off the same kind of tree but see how now there's these pods on it and i just think the pods look cool so i definitely want to have uh chunks of those so what i did for this was tried to get more like the oh more like a straight vertical piece and not one that's going every which way direction wise. So then even though I just cut that off, I can totally still use that. And I'm just taking some of the smaller branches off the bottom so that I have something straight to stick into the dirt. So doing this before it freezes as much as it has is probably a good idea. Jeez. And you can take these little pieces and if you put a bunch of them together, you can put them in a little crock inside, um, an old coffee tin inside. So you don't have to just use fake stuff. The real stuff smells amazing. I don't care which, uh, kind of tree it is they all smell good these are a little bit bigger my fingers are not going to be able to pull them off That chunk looks pretty dry already. And I'm just holding it up to get an idea of the length that I want to cut it, knowing that it's going to need to go in the ground an inch or two. One more of those in the back. So basically you want to, it's kind of like when you design a space in a shop for sure, in your home, kind of the same thing, but you want it to look good from all directions. So whether someone's coming from this way or straight on or coming from the front door, you want it to look good all the way around. Okay, then my favorite is this stuff that looks like it has blueberries on it. And I'm, that's a very technical term. So I'm sure there's somebody that's watching that can identify all of these things. But I know you don't follow me for my knowledge because I buy things that I like. I don't know their history or their date or anything like that. I just buy it because I like it. And if I like it, I figure someone else will like it too. 
And then these are just pretty. So I picked those to, to go in it. And you notice also that as I am putting these things in that kind of have a curve to them, I'm trying to curve them all out. This one's really curved. If you've ever watched me do videos with Amy at Flower Teak, this is what she does to the roses and the incarnations every time she gets in the morning. And she wires, puts a wire around them because they're not going to have a nice stem like this. Here in the front, I can't see anything. Okay, gotta stand in your way here for a second. I feel like it just needs some filler there. This one is pretty full. Is it kind of wise or? So can you see how if you added some pine cones or some white birch logs or some red berries, it would really pop the color. Because I know not everybody is a neutral person. Sure, if this is where I was meaning to go. Okay, so I think it looks pretty good. Um, tell me what you think. Have you made one before? It's really easy to do. Probably the biggest thing is just going out and collecting all of your supplies so that you can do it. And obviously you wanna do it on a day that's a little bit warmer like today. Um, tomorrow the project's gonna be, again, since it's warm, is decorating my truck. The one that you always see me decorating. Um, I cleaned it out today, got all of the nasty ass pumpkins ugh, out of there and gourds. Um, that was gross, I should have done that a long time ago. And then I moved out all the straw and the straw weighs like 200 pounds of bale. So dad's gonna load it in his truck and hopefully save it for me for next year. Um, so it should be good and ready to go for some decorating tomorrow. So every time I decorate the truck, I decorate it differently. So this is gonna be a totally different one than I've done before. So we'll see how it goes. So hope you can come watch tomorrow. Bye.